since you all loved the last 10 car content, we are back up in the White Mountains doing a little hike and catch. Just rocking the two GoPros today because we're about to get some rain. I didn't really want to feel like bringing the big camera with me. And we're on a trail that's hopefully going to lead us right into this brook over here. And then I'll sit down and kind of go through how I Tenkara. I've had the Tenkara for the last seven years or so, and only break it out every once in a while. And these little mountain streams are like perfect for it, except for the rod's a little long sometimes. So I'll go, I'll go over why I have this rod instead of a couple of the other ones that are out there in a minute. All right, so here is my uh, Tenkara rod. This is uh, the Tenkara USA Roto. This is their version one. And since you can see where I am, it's kind of overhanging. I'm actually in a, kind of an open spot right now. That, uh, you know, rod length kind of matters. So this is a 10 foot six or a 320 centimeters, a nine foot nine, 297 centimeters, and an eight foot 10, 270 centimeters. So this is three way adjustable. And all I have is for, for line on here right now, because I was in some really tight stuff before, is probably three feet of 2X, and then another foot of 5X, because I was literally just dapping it on the water. So let's take the, uh, the rod out. And what I'm using for a fly, which still has a piece of fish on it, is a little tiny purple parachute Adams, which is my favorite favorite brook trout fly out there. They really key in on that uh, that purple. Don't know why it's probably like the ultraviolet spectrum or something like that. And I'm gonna put a little bit of uh, floating on there, so I'm not dealing with sinking all day. And we're just gonna go catch a couple of brook trout and kind of show you, you know, how I'm how I'm picking apart these streams here. And I'm carrying a, a way bigger pack than I need, but it's, it's my pack that has everything in it. So that's what I'm carrying. Um, I do have a furled leader that came with the rod. So this is like a combo kit, came with a bunch of stuff. And uh, I do use that for bigger rivers or stuff where I can get away with a little bit of drag. Uh, but here we're in kind of some plunge pool stuff. So I might have to switch over to some nymphing or some tight lining, but we'll, we won't know until we get up there. So let's go. So I can already see basically bait fish swimming around, which is always good. Hopefully you guys can see those over there. I'm not even wearing polarized glasses. There's no really point right now. Glares at max, but I'm gonna start my rod at full length. And since these streams are very, very skinny and ultra clear, I'm going to just dap this in there because I can reach with this rod. You know, a normal fly rod, I can probably throw it up there. And same with this, but we're gonna try to get, oh, so I just spooked a book trout. He was way over where he wasn't supposed to be. And I might put a, a bigger dry on because they like, actually like having stuff slapped on the water. Well, I spooked that one, that one's gone. Set up steam a little bit. This place is beautiful, first time being here. And I do have waiting boots on that need to be adjusted. But we have this little pool here in front of us. Let's hit that. Oh, these fish are spooky. I just saw one dart over there. So I might need to put on my longer leader anyways. He's under that rock. See if I can see him with the GoPro down there. Probably. So now that we've spooked a couple of trout, let's uh, make some changes. Don't be scared of making changes on the fly. That's fishing for you. So we're gonna switch over to that furled leader that I was talking about, which is this right here. And so there's a a fat end and a skinny end, so it is tapered. 
And we want the fat end towards the rod, which is this one. And then we're just gonna tie basically a little piece of that 2X and that 5X on there. And I just do that with a normal clinch knot. You can tie a couple different knots if you want. Cut our tag off. And I'm gonna go with a bigger purple parachute Adams if I have one. I'm not sure if I have one or not. And I'm using a Loon Loxa for a floating. And I'm gonna evenly on the fly, otherwise the fly will kind of ride funky. So we have a big long pool up here. I have plenty of casting room, which I don't normally have. And I see a brook trout right there. Come on, take it. Ooh, I missed him. These fish are spooky. Oh, got one. Got one, got one, got one. There we go. First fish on the Tinkara today. You wet your hands. And this water is more than cold enough just for you guys to, to care about that. Well, the fish care about it, obviously. And any of these little pockets can hold fish. Don't just literally peck at everything because these fish move up, they can jump. I think somebody told me once they can jump seven times their length. Oh, got another one. Let's pull him up here. Get him in the net. Just look at that little guy. Gorgeous. Got that parachute right in his mouth. All right, so I got my own leader on here, which is now just uh, the same length as my rod as it is collapsed. So that way I can, or almost collapse, I can always shorten it up a little bit. So but I have it on like the medium setting and that'll allow me to extend and pull back if I need to. So these little, little brook trout have a fraction of a second to say that's food or not food. So the instant that thing hits the water, they usually hit it. Oh, that was a bigger fish. No. I doubt he'll hit again. These fish are way more spooky than where I was earlier today. So I talk about perfect drift. I mean, there's no line on the water at all. Oh, no. They might actually, well, I'm not sure if they're rejecting it or not. There we go, there's a bigger one. Just an absolute beauty. There she goes. He goes, probably. Setting the hook is getting hard to do. Pop him in the net. Run it in it. What a gem. Oh, there we go. There goes another one. Oh. oh, I was sleeping on the hook set. Dang it. Looking somewhere else. If you guys see me doing this, I'm just drying the fly up. I lost my desiccant stuff yesterday. 
I needed a new bottle anyways. Let's do a parachute. Bow and arrow cast in there. Let's see if I can get down to this big pool down here without spooking anything. We're doing, we're doing pretty good so far. Caught a bunch of fish, and uh, at some point here, I'm gonna have to hike out and head home, but I could just, I could do this for days and days and days, but it's so much fun. Well, thanks again for watching. Caught a bunch of little brook trout dropped. I don't know, a gazillion of the little guys. Not 100% sure why. I am gonna try to tie up one of the vertically orientated tenkara flies, this, Sabiri, I don't know. I don't know how to pronounce it. Like I said, I'm fairly new to uh, Tenkara. If you guys want to throw me any tips, uh, by all means, I'll uh, accept the advice. And we're going to be walking on this cliff here on the way back. That should be fun. But yeah, I think the vertically orientated hook, physics-wise, when I'm yanking straight up, compared to a normal Western style where I'm yanking at like a 45 degree angle, I think that vertical hook set on a fly that's orientated vertically will stick more fish. Um, just my imagination. I could be wrong. Let me know your guys' thoughts in the comments. And uh, thanks again for watching Beneficent.